It's, it talked story in the Torah, everything. It's very happy, very, very happy. You so anytime, you don't see me the, 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 the face. Please, I can't. I can't. start off before I talk about the fire a little bit about the season we're in which certainly makes this fire that much sadder the outcome but a little bit about fire safety for all of our faiths we all use candles certainly don't leave candles unattended Christmas lights be very cautious extension cords tragedy strikes at this time of year and I said before time of year makes it that much sadder and our traditions uh, open us up to more possibilities. So an update on on the fire. Four people died here, a mom and three children. Father, who acted very courageously, got two teenagers out safely, two others got out. The father and the two teenagers remain in critical condition fighting for their lives at Staten Island University Hospital. So, uh, of the nine folks that were here, four have perished, three are critical, two are, uh, are stable. As far as um, smoke alarms, we do have reason to believe that a smoke alarm was activated and uh, may have played a role in converting two of the boys to the fact that there was a fire in this home. That's a good thing. We haven't located that yet where it was, but uh, we do have indications that that happened. So, uh, I caution everyone at this time of year, please, please take, take care with everything you do for your sake, for your family's sake. Uh, be careful, celebrate, but celebrate safely. To say that that's what caused it, but yes, a, a, a menorah is a possibility. Uh, it's way too early to be definitive. Can you talk about what the firefighters faced when they first got on? Well, the firefighters arrived in less than three minutes, and in that short period of time, the fire actually met them at the front door. And uh, took, took very aggressive action by the firefighters, knowing there were people inside, uh, to move their hose lines in to make their searches. And unfortunately, uh, they found four members of the family upstairs, uh, all of whom had died. Do you know which floor the fire started on? First floor. Can you talk about the extent of the damage and what the fire marshals are seeing now inside? Well, uh, every room in this house has severe fire damage. This, this fire uh, traveled quickly up open stairs and uh, severely damaged all three levels four bedrooms on the second floor and two bedrooms in the attic. And the deceased were on the second or the third floor? On the second floor. Were they in separate rooms? They were in uh, two separate rooms. The deceased, yes. Was there anyone on the third floor? No, no, no one was sleeping on the third floor. How many, how many times did the father run back there? Uh, we don't know. He, he was able to get out of the second floor. He was severely burned. He tried to get back in to save his, the rest of his family, uh, the ones that he didn't already save. Uh, we believe he acted very courageously and, and, and tried uh, desperately. And, and it's, hopefully it didn't cost him his life also, but it paid. Thank you. 
Can we talk about how first? many smoke detectors are in the house? Because we think you already covered that. No, that we don't know yet. When I say we had indication that a smoke detector activated. We haven't found it yet. And uh, we don't know how many in total were in that house. Where were the teenagers at? The two teenagers. The, in the front bedrooms, the two that were severely injured and got off that front roof were in the front bedrooms. There were uh, two younger boys sleeping in the rear on the first floor. Those are the two that uh, are the least seriously injured. Do we know candles were left burning overnight? Excuse me? Do we know candles were left burning overnight? We don't know yet, but that's always a possibility. And, and, and we know that you know folks of all faiths um, do burn candles at this time of year. So it's something that that's why I mentioned it to be uh, extra cautious about. Was the menorah found in the house? Um, it's a little too early yet to know. Uh, you know, there's, uh, I would say in many of the houses in this community have a menorah. I'm sure they did. Uh, but we, we don't know yet. Five firefighters had uh, non-life-threatening injuries. They'll be okay. Uh, as I said before, they acted extremely aggressively to enter this, this building. Uh, the way they did to try to rescue these folks, and uh, unfortunately, it was too late. So, if the, if the uh, smoke detector was going off, um, did, did they not hear it? What do you think happened? Well, the, the boys on the first floor did hear it and you know, did uh, uh, alert folks that there was a fire. And uh, I, I believe the people that called from across the street also heard the alarm. It's a terrible tragedy for the community, it's a terrible tragedy for the city, and especially for the part of this community who had a, a recent tragedy similar to this a couple years back with children and some of them in the same schools were affected. So it's a terrible, horrific tragedy and we're doing everything we can to help the, uh, the, uh, the students in the schools and the neighbors. Our, uh, a number of organizations are reaching out to them to try to give them the proper counseling and support that they need at this time. Uh, we just met with the mayor and the fire commissioner uh, about reaching out to the rabbis and to the community leaders and the schools, the yeshivas. And the, uh, to, to better educate, but to continue the education, to make sure that everyone is well aware of all safety, uh, safety issues that are necessary when dealing with fires and uh, dealing with candles. The commissioner uh, said specifically they do not know yet the reason, the cause for this fire, but it's prudent to use this opportunity to remind everybody not to leave candles unattended no matter what religion you are, no matter what holiday you celebrate, it's not a smart thing to leave candles unattended at any time, and it's always better to uh, have to put them out before you go to sleep at night. The family is Orthodox Jewish family, not Hasidic. Let's talk about the children in the community. You know, when you talk to parents, what do these kids understand? What are they going through? I have not personally spoken to the children, but I've been in touch with the schools uh, all day and they tell me that it's a very difficult time for them and the teachers, the principals, the teachers and the uh, therapists that they brought in are dealing with it and working with them and helping them to understand that this is unfortunately part of life, we have ups and downs in life and we believe fully that God controls everything and there's a purpose to everything and they're dealing with it as professionals do. Yeah. Uh, sometime this evening, it's not, not set yet. The candles, the Hanukkah candles, most uh, people uh, believe that the minimum time is a half hour. Some people uh, put it out after that time, if they have to leave, some people leave it until it burns out. But it's always best to not ever leave it unattended. Thanks. Especially during this time, during the holiday season, in the middle of Hanukkah, what is a loss? It's a tragedy any time of year. It makes no difference the time of year. It doesn't make a difference holiday season or not holiday season. It's a horrible tragedy any time someone passes away in any tragic way, even not in a tragic way, but especially a tragic way, and especially children. There's no words to express the 
horrific tragedy and uh, heartbreak and that everyone feels in the community at this moment. Josh, Jeremy.